from now and sometime we'll be, we'll be a part of that. Amen? And uh, what a blessing. I preached last Sunday night on the Holy Ghost saying, Acts 13, Barnabas and Simeon, you know, as they ministered unto the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said. Amen. And what he's doing is already ministering and serving the Lord. Amen. Amen. And as he's prayed and probably fasted and prayed, burden, you can tell the burden, I believe the Holy Ghost will put his finger on it. Amen. Amen. And uh, I like what I'm hearing. So I praise God for that. Amen. And uh, let, let's be prayerful about uh, their ministry and the family, wonderful family. And I believe in boys just getting a few more years. They, they, they'll, they'll listen. He's got a, he's got a, he's got a witnessing uh, circuit riding team right there. Amen. amen. And what a blessing that is. And so, uh, amen. What a blessing. Amen. Here's what we're gonna do. Us as y'all come on this evening. Here's what we're gonna do. Tonight, tomorrow night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, we're gonna we're gonna raise money for these missionaries and help them all we can. Okay. Unless you're giving your tithe tonight, every time this will go to missions, okay? You can write a check. If you write a check, make sure you label it missions so we'll know that. But we want to do all we can to help these, these missionary families and help them this week, okay? I, I, I want to say this to you, and I'm not pushing you, but I'm pushing you. If you want God to bless you, you get involved in this and have a part in this financially, amen? Everybody... Find a way somehow to give this week towards this mission project and helping these missionary families. Amen. I promise you God will bless you individually. I promise you he'll bless this church. And uh, you come and, and tell me the blessing that God gives you when, when you bless others. Amen. Because I know the Lord will bless you. Amen. Amen. And our Sunday school classes have already been working on that. Just a note for you teachers. Any of you Sunday school teachers, uh, you come to me. Several of you have already talked to me about it. Uh, you come to me and let me know, make sure I get a number on each uh, uh, each one of your missionaries. I need the number on it, and you come to me, and I'll get that on the list. And so we're going to do it as a church. Sunday school teachers uh, and their classes have worked on it, and then we're going to add some more to it from our church. So with all three of those put together, we're going to be able to try to be a blessing to these families. Amen? So let's have a word of prayer and ask God to bless the offering. And just speak to our hearts and just thank God for what he's doing already. Amen. Brother Tommy, pray for us and let's bless this offering tonight. All right? Let's pray. Father, we come to you tonight, Lord, and give thanks for you blessing. Yes. And thank you, Father, for each missionary here, Father. Step down my face, Lord. Give me your word, Lord. And Lord, we surrender to you, Father. Amen. And Father, may your hands be upon us. May your hands be upon our church, Father, as we look forward to support and thank you for helping the missionaries, Lord. Yes, Lord.
good. Folks, aren't you glad you came to church tonight? Amen. Amen. We had a good service this morning, at least I thought. Amen. And I tell folks, I pay my taxes, I stare at you, and I'm entitled to my opinion. Amen. And in my opinion, we had a good morning. Amen. But uh, we appreciate you coming tonight. We can reach out with the gospel of the Lord Jesus. Folks, I tell you, you'll never go wrong sharing the gospel of the Lord Jesus. Now, I know that people, they reject it. We were looking back in the notes on Denmark tonight on how many folks there say they believe in God. I told that brother, the devils believe in God. But folks, how much of the Bible do you believe? I tell folks on a regular basis, and I don't make no apologies for it. If I make folks mad, that's your problem. But if you believe the Bible, when you say you believe the Bible, and you want folks to to think you believe the Bible, it changes your lifestyle. Amen. Amen. But right now, won't you stand with me? Get around the fellowship and get up there. get uneven. We, I always fix this. Why did you just high five Jenny? Put those legs like that. Hurry.
they got a bunch down there in their church. There's about 15 of them. It's about half of them. But boy, they, I tell you, went down there and preached for them. And I wanted to take these girls and kids on the road with me. I'm telling you, there's about 15 of them. And they flat out and let her rip. So y'all come on. You've heard them before. Ag them on. And, uh, amen. Amen. You're glad they're here. Let's give them a big hand. Amen. Thank you all for coming. Sing a couple for us, and then we're gonna have some preaching here in a minute. <laughs> Praise God. Got it?
several of our seniors. We want to pray, uh, uh, help me, uh, Charles. Uh, that was your uh, help me. Becky, was it? That was your aunt. That was your aunt passed away today. And, uh, we've been praying for her aunt uh, passed away today. So we want to be praying for uh, Becky and the aunt there as well. Uh, Brother Ray and them left today. Their daughter, the granddaughter, the one that was operating, we mentioned about. They went to see. They, they couldn't get out Thursday because of the snow. And they're heading that way to see the granddaughter. Pray for that granddaughter, 12 years of age. And, uh, and they did surgery on her back and uh, broke her back three places. I had to do that. And so let's be praying for that young lady. We got, I know we got several folks we'd be praying for, but just uh, we got a lot of good folks. We got, we got a lot of good godly people that are not here tonight that want to be here tonight. Right. And uh, we, we, we're praying for them. So let's listen to the man of God tonight. And Brother Dr. Dean Webstone, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Worldwide New Testament Baptist Missions. Am I getting that close enough? That's, That's right. a mouthful right Amen. there. But Brother Danny is a dear man of God, and you hear him well tonight. Amen. Appreciate Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor, and what a delight to be back with you this evening. And when I started out with Worldwide years ago, my title was Director of Church Planting and National Evangelism. Hey. So I would get up in the church on deputation. I'd say, I'm Danny Whetstone with Worldwide New Testament Baptist Missions, uh, Director of. And by the time I got all that done, my time was up. <laughs> but uh, I have been able to shorten the title. For myself, but I haven't had much success on changing the title or the name for the mission. But uh, if you ever get it, it'll probably stay with you. You'll have to save a lot of time. We just call it worldwide. But uh, blessing to be here with you again this evening. And I was just uh, listening to talking about the dog meat. That'd be better than balloon. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'd rather have a hot dog than. <laughs> and uh, many times, egg with the little duck in it, and, stuff. and uh, you just knock the top of it off and drink it and eat it, and they say it's a delicacy. And I'm going to let them enjoy all of it. <laughs> Amen. And I'll eat just about anything, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to get in line for it. young fellow told me, he said, that you go to the Philippines, you know, he said, you it just you have, to, have to show you manhood. I said, I got over that a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I've been cured of that. I don't have to worry about it at all. Amen? Yeah. Uh, I tell you what, I'm glad we're not in a boat. Yeah. We'd be taking in water over on this on this side. You folks got to get busy. <laughs> we're on this side over here. Amen. Would you turn in your Bibles with me, please, to the book of Romans in chapter number 10? not actually going to preach this passage. I just want to use it as an introduction into the message this evening. But you turn there with me to Romans and chapter number 10. Amen. Romans and chapter number 10. Okay. Verse number 13 is very familiar to all of us. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. I want to say I believe that. I believe that we preach a gospel that is to whosoever. Right. <clears throat> that God did not pick and choose That's right. and yeah. condemn men to hell. Right. I believe that he offered them a way of hope and a way of salvation. Right. And God would not hold a carrot out in front of somebody if they were not able to attain to it, to get to it. And so when he hangs salvation out in front of the world, I believe that every sinner is capable right. of reaching the place where they too can pass from death to life Amen. and be saved by the grace of God. For Amen. whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. But verse 15, how then, excuse me, verse 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Notice this. How shall they hear without a preacher? Amen. Right. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Amen. I believe with all of my heart that God puts things where we can reach them. Amen. And it seems to me in this portion of Scripture, He makes it so real and simple for us to grasp. If we are to reach the whosoever's of the world, 
He gives us two ways by which we can do it. One, we need preachers. We need folks that will go. And, and I think the word here does not necessarily speak of a, a preaching, a pulpit proclamation, but rather of proclaimers of the truth. Right. And so we need preachers. We need, to, we need those to go and tell. And then we need those that will give so that those who have surrendered to go can go. Amen. So we need goers and givers. Amen. So, well, bro, what's going on? How do, you ter- how do you determine which one you are? Well, the answer to that is yes. Amen. We are all goers and givers. Amen. It just so happens that God sent you to this area. You say, well, we're more interested in foreign missions. Well, this is foreign to somebody halfway around the world. China's looking back at us. I suppose we look like we're a long way off, about the same distance as we are from them. Yes. And so uh, all of the world is a harvest field for our God. And he chooses to plant some people in places like this where they can reach this area. And then, where we cannot go from this area, then we deputize folks to represent us in places that we cannot go. So, uh, God has given me a command, and to the church. Amen. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. 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 But I can only be in one place at one time. I've been trying for 29 years to be in more places than <laughs> one at one time. Amen. You can't get there. Right. One place at a time. Even the devil can only be in one place at a time. Right. Only God is omnipresent right. and can be everywhere at yeah. once. But I have to be in one place. And so if I have the command upon me to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, but I can only be in one place at a time, how am I going to fulfill that command? I'm going to join me a good, Bible-believing, Bible-preaching, missions-hearted church. Amen. 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 Yeah. And I'm going to support that church with my tithes and offerings. Amen. And with my faith promise commitment. Yes. Amen. And then missionaries are going to come around on deputation. We're going to deputize them to represent us in places we cannot go. Right. Amen. And so through my going in the area that I'm in, and through my giving to send others where I cannot go, I can fulfill the great commission that God has given me Amen. in my life. Right. Now... I don't believe that we can pay someone to do for us what we can do for ourselves. And so we need each of us as believers to feel the indebtedness of sharing the gospel with people that are right around us. And then we need to give so that others can go to places that we cannot go. Now, if you would, with that in mind... Turn with me over to 1 Corinthians in chapter number 16. 1 Corinthians chapter number 16. So two ways that we can reach out. One, we need goers. And two, we need givers. And all of us are both. God, through his will, will determine where and how much. Right? Right? Here in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians Remember, chapter 15 has to do with the resurrection. He started out with the gospel. We're talking about that this morning. Uh, The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. How that Christ died according to the scriptures, was buried, rose again according to the scriptures. And then he sets out in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians to say to those who were teaching false doctrine, there is a resurrection. Jesus Christ got up out of the grave. He said, as a matter of fact, if Christ did not get up out of the grave, we're yet in our sin. But he said he did get up out of the grave. And he said, because he got up out of the grave, one day we have the hope that we will as well. Therefore, my beloved brethren, last verse of the chapter, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Amen. And the very next thing he talks about after challenging us to superabound in the work of the Lord, he says in chapter 16, verse 1, yep. now concerning the collection. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Yep. Amen. Brother. What is that? I know, I know you might not be accustomed to do it, but I know I can just mention that. Now the collection of those things. And I know there's something inside you that says, I just want to get up and run and shout. I know. I see it in you, but I appreciate you restraining yourself. Amen? 
I'd rather preach on giving than anything I know in the Bible apart from the gospel of Christ. Yep. You get more movement in the Baptist church talking about giving than anything else. <laughs> Amen. I, I can about tell you which side a man carries his wallet. You'll start leaning, putting a little more weight <laughs> on that side when you start preaching on giving. Lady folks will take their foot and you know, push purses under the pew. You can get a lot of movement in the Baptist church when you start talking about giving. But I want to say to you, this matter of giving should not be drudgery for us. It should not be fearful for us. Let me, let me ask this question. How many here this morning, or excuse me, this evening, you've been tithing, and don't ask for too quick, you've been tithing for at least five years, consistently tithing to the Lord for at least five years, and you wish you had never gotten started? How many? No one? Praise God. Well, maybe there's some folks here tonight. You got involved with faith promise giving five years ago, and you've been consistently involved in faith promise giving for the last five years, and you wish you had never gotten started. Like that. Mm. You know the only people who ever gripe about giving are folks who don't. That's right. Amen. Because folks who do give understand. God does bless. Amen. And there are a number of ways in the scripture in which we can give. Of course, we start with the tithe. Amen. Bring you all the tithes to the storehouse. Yep. That there may be meat in my house. And prove me now here, here with Seth the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out of yep. there shall not be room enough to receive. Amen. He said, but well, let's go on that's Old Testament scripture. <laughs> so is thou shalt not kill. That's right. Amen. But it's still good Bible, don't you think? Amen. Amen. Sure. And I would not ever say to you, put God to the test. No, God said. God said, prove me. And I believe by virtue of the fact that there are people sitting in this room who have, who have given tithes and offerings for at least five years consistently, and not a one of them said, I wish I'd never gotten started, I'm going to take that as a testimony that God told the truth. Amen. That I will open you the windows of heaven. Yep. I will pour you out a blessing. There shall not be room enough. Yes. Amen. You see, I believe every Christian lives on ninety percent of his income or less. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. I believe you can take it down to the church, or you can take it to the doctor's office, yeah. or you can take it to the mechanic. Yes. Right. But but I don't. I, I I think God sees to it that not one Christian on earth lives on more than ninety percent of his income. Because that's all that belongs to him. Amen. The Lord said, will a man rob God? That's right. Mm. right. And Israel said, how, how could we have robbed? He said, you robbed me in tithes and offerings. Yep. Right. You're a crook. Yes. But not only when we refuse to tithe, not only do we rob God, we rob our church. Right. Preach it. We rob our family. Go ahead, preach. Because God wants to open the windows of heaven and pull out a blessing. Amen. Amen. And you rob God. Amen. And by virtue of the fact that you spend everything you can get your hands on on yourself, you testify to your children that God's not all that important after all. all right. That's right, preacher. Now, now smile. <laughs> you know, when I was a boy, I, I hate to confess this, but I, I ran with guys that were mean. I wasn't one of them, I just ran with them. <laughs> We'd see a pack of dogs, we'd have to pick up a stone and hurl it out. You know which one would yelp? The one that got hit. Yeah, right. yeah. And so when you come to a service like this and, and you hear preaching on giving, the, the last thing in the world you want to do is walk out with a frown. Yeah. No, you want to smile. You, huh? Else, else you might just as well hang a sign on yourself. I'm a God robber. So it's a necessity is fun you to be nice to me tonight. Yeah. And you might throw rocks at me tomorrow, but you can have to be nice tonight. Amen. Give yourself away. You Go say, ahead. I say to you, tithing should not uh, grieve us. Amen. Amen. That's right. It should. Well, that's not the truth is. I, I can't afford to tithe. <laughs> well, that could be the case. But if that is the case, you bought something out of the will of God. Absolutely right. Because God will never lead you to commit yourself to more than 90% of your income. Amen. And I have very good news for you. 
Right. There's a remedy. Whatever you bought out of the will of God, you can sell. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Right. Oh, you'd be a lot better off walking than you would be riding in a car that you're paying for with money you stole from God. Oh, my. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. You'd be better off living in the woods of the tent than you would be living in a house Come on. that you're paying the mortgage with money that you're stealing from Amen. God. Amen. Yes, Preach it, brother. Oh, my. Yes, sir. Amen. I know, I know. You wish you'd stay home already. <laughs> but I have every reason to believe that most of the folks I'm talking to tonight, your heart says amen. Yes. I put it to the Praise it's God. True. Amen. So we start off, we can give the time. There's a passage of scripture in Mark. Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. Many that were rich cast in much, and there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites which made parley. And he called unto him his disciples and said unto them, yep. hey, I say unto you, this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which had cast into the treasure. Yep. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she ever want did cast in all that she had, even all of her living. Yep. I think there are two kinds of giving in that portion of Scripture. And I really love, I really love it, Mark 12, 41 through 44. I really love that portion of Scripture uh, for one reason. For Baptist people who say, God's not interested in money. <laughs> if God's not interested in money, what was he doing sitting over against the treasure? Hey. Right. Jesus is God, isn't he? Right. Hey. I have, had a Jehovah's Witness, a false witness come to my house one day. And uh, as soon as I opened the door, I knew who he was. Or at least I knew who he was from. And I said, now, what are you saying? Let me ask you a question. What think you of Christ? He said, I believe he's the son of God. Mm -hmm. I said, do you believe he's God? Well, he said, I believe he's the son of God. I said, do you believe he's God? Mm. He said, I believe the Bible teaches he's the son of God. I said, can I ask you another question? He said, sure. I said, are you capable of a yes or no answer? <laughs> he said, yes. I said, well, let's go back to the first question. <laughs> Is Jesus Christ God? He said, no. Hey. I said, well, what about John 1? In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was God. I said, what about Hebrews? God the Father says to God the Son, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Hey. He said, I don't know. I said, I suggest you find out. Hey. Hey, and it was another time the doorbell rang, and I went to the door, and there were a couple of fellows standing there, and they had you know, little pins on their shirts, mm -hmm. and it said elder so-and-so. Mm -hmm. Well, I could look at one of them and tell he was elder. <laughs> but I'll tell you, the other one looked awfully young to me. <laughs> But uh, they said, can we talk to you? And I said, for just a moment. So I stepped outside. Because John said, don't let them in the house. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Ooh, don't, yeah. let, don't let the wife and kids hear what right. they got to say. Yep. So I stepped outside. And we talked about hell. And we talked about Christ. And uh, very soon he looked at me and he said, now, Mr. Whetstone, you do know that one of us is wrong. I said, sir, I know more than that. I know which one it is. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hey, I'll tell you, Jesus Christ is God. Yes. And God was sitting over against the treasury, and he beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. And a little widow came, and she threw in two pints, which made a farthing, a penny. A penny. Yep. Hey, Peter, get James John. Come here, I want to show you something. You see that little woman going there? He said she gave more than all those fellows in purple and fine linen. Right, right. And you know Simon Peter had to say, you don't mean it. <laughs> sure. No, no, the Lord would say that. She didn't give more in the amount that she gave, but proportionately she gave more. Because she gave a sacrificial gift. Oh, my. Right. Once she had given, she didn't have anything left over. She sacrificed. Could she have used the money for herself? Sure, she could have. But she said, I believe the work of the Lord to be so important that I'm going to give my offering to the Lord and not spend it on myself. It was a sacrificial gift. Yeah. Then I believe the wealthy that gave, gave out of their abundance. And I don't think the Lord was saying anything was wrong with it. I'm just simply saying that their gift, though in its amount, probably was a great deal larger than hers. Right. But proportionately, it was far smaller because once they had given their gift, they had plenty left over. Which is an interesting thing for us to recognize of the Lord as well. He not only knows how much we give, He knows how much we have left over. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. And He evidently was a bit interested in that as well. 
Because the truth of the matter is, not 10% of what we have belongs to the Lord. 100% of what we have belongs to the Lord. He just lets us keep heaven. He's awfully kind, isn't he? Amen. I tell you, God's amazing. Amen. He gives me everything I have. Then I take a little bit of it, and I bring it back, and I give it to him. And he makes over me like I've done something. It came from him to start with. It was all his to start with. Right. I'm just bring a little piece of it and give it back to hey. you. He says, you're such a good boy. Huh? Isn't that amazing? Yep. Sure. I, I mean, he acts like I've had something to do with it. But isn't it true in everything in our lives? That's right. If we are successful in the service of the Lord in doing anything, God makes out over us like we've done something. Oh, my. Well, the truth of the matter is, without him, we can do nothing. Right. What an amazing God it we is, serve. Sir. Yes, sir. So we can give, no, excuse me, let me reword it. We must give the tithe. Amen. Amen. Oh, we must. Yes, sir. We can give a sacrificial offering. Amen. And we can give out of our abundance. That's right. But here in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, he's talking about the gift for the poor saints that were in Jerusalem. It's a faith gift. Or it's giving graciously, if you please. Right. It's a grace gift. Yep. You see, I think Paul left Antioch of Syria and headed out on this missionary journey. And as he saw these Gentiles come to Christ, he said to them, I want you to pray for the poor saints or group. Now, they're all Jewish, but they've been saved by the grace of God. He said, I want you to pray for these poor saints. But can you imagine being a Jewish believer in that day? Hmm. Let's suppose you had a shop. You think any Jews are going to buy from you anymore? Hmm. Or suppose you work for someone and he's Jewish. You suppose he's going to fire you the next day? Hmm. And then, so things were extraordinarily difficult, and especially so for the believers that were in Jerusalem. So I think as Paul went out, he'd see a group of Gentiles saved, suppose they, uh, suppose they were maybe in Antioch of Pisidia. And he said, uh, I want you to pray for the poor saints that are in Jerusalem. They have sent you spiritual things. I want you to pray for them. And so they started praying. And he went on down to Iconium, and they did the same thing. And let me leave a prayer request with you. Pray for the poor saints of Jerusalem. Then he went on down to Lystra, and he said, I want you to pray for the believers over in Jerusalem. They're yep. having a very difficult time. And then he went on down to Derby, and he preached to them, saw some people saved, and told them the same. And I don't know if Paul ever had any idea that they'd be able to give any money because they were poor themselves. Moreover, brethren, we do you to win of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of the joy in their deep poverty abounded to the riches of their liberality. Right. So they were living in deep poverty themselves. Right. Right. But Paul is saying, you can pray. But I tell you, they fell under a burden. And they said, we want to help. I imagine Paul said, you people are so poor. Poor people call you poor. How do you go up here? <laughs> I think they said, we want to try. Hey. And they did. I guess when they received the offering, they looked at it and said, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> but now they pay Paul's expenses to even get it back to Jerusalem. Yep. So they came up with an idea. They said, hey, we believe God will give through us what he won't give to us. Hey. Would you let us? You see, and I believe, we as Christians, I believe we're funnels. Amen. Right. We're opened up real big toward God. Amen. And we taper down. Amen. And God pours His blessings Amen. in. Amen. 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 Very often as Christians, we get nervous that the blessings are going to stop flowing. And we'll, we'll reach down and put a spiritual cork in the bottom of the funnel because we want to hang on to all of them we can. But then you realize that the blessings of God are like man. If you keep them, they stink. Right. They'll spoil them. That's why you'll hear some folk give testimony, and they'll say, back in 1949, because that's the only time anything's ever happened. <laughs> yeah. You should hear a fellow give a testimony. And preacher, every time he gave a testimony, it was, we're back. well, hey, I'm glad for whatever happened back in 19-whatever it was. But how about today? Are not the blessings flowing today? Amen. Pull the cork out. That's right. Amen. Be anxious for that. Amen. Brother David Gibbs, he says, never resist a generous urge. That's it. 
Never resist a generous urge when God puts on your heart to do something. Right. Don't resist it. God. Yes, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. Paul said Jesus said that. Amen. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give into your bosom for the same measure that you meet with all that shall be measured to you again. How, do, how does it work? Give and it shall be given unto you. Not it shall be given unto you. Give. That's right. No, we do the, we, we give first. There's no faith in giving for something that you already have. Amen. But when we say, Lord, I am trusting you, and I am doing this, I am believing in your will. Amen. God will help us. Amen. So Paul said in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, he said, I, I, want to, I want to bear record. Let me give you a witness. He said, these Macedonian believers gave according to their own power. Yea, and beyond their power. Amen. Now they're into the resources of God. And they're believing that God would give through them to be a blessing to others what he would not give them to heap upon themselves. Right. You see. And then in the last part of verse 3, 2 Corinthians 8, it says, and they were willing of themselves. Amen. One commentator said that meant they made a joy of robbing themselves. <laughs> when, these, when these Macedonian believers give, you don't, you don't get the idea that, that they're being persecuted. Right. Amen. It seems they're blessed to be able to give. Amen. So now Paul, here in this portion of Scripture that we're looking at in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, he says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do he. Notice this. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by in his stories, God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Upon the first day of the week seems to indicate to me that it was an act of worship. Because that's what the Lord's people do on the first day of the week. Amen. In the Old Testament economy, they met on Saturday or on the Sabbath day. But in the New Testament economy, we meet on Resurrection Day. Amen. We meet on the Lord's Day. We meet on the first day of the week. Amen. And so it seems to make sense that Paul would say, when you come together for that worship service upon the first day of the week, Laid by these faith promised gifts. Now keep in mind, this was a collection for the saints. This is not the time. Right. This is beyond the time. Amen. You Amen. cannot give God an offering until the time is first. Tell it. Amen. Amen. You can't. Amen. You say, well, I'm not tithing, but I'm going to get involved in faith promised missions this year. Mm. I tell you what, if I was you, I'd kind of set that faith promised missions card aside. Yeah, right. And I would get to an altar of prayer or a secret Amen. place of prayer. And I would say, God, I have sinned against you as surely as I committed adultery. I've been robbing you. I've been stealing you. Preacher. And I want you to forgive me, Lord. And I'm going to make this thing right. Hey. And I, I, I would start consistently tithing. Amen. And then once, once I was faithful in that little while, then I'd come back to that faith promise thing. Right. Of like course, you can't give God a gift until the time. Good. His first man. That's right. Amen. That's good for you. Amen. Yeah. And I'm, I'm guessing, though, I don't know you, I'm guessing I can take a few minutes out right now and have both stand up one after another and say the words. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Yep. Praise God. Amen. That's right. And sometimes we can't figure it out. <laughs> I think sometimes the Lord makes me laugh. He laughs on me. All right. My brakes don't go out as often as I don't know how he does it, but somehow the ends get tied up. Amen. Right. Sit down with pencil and paper, it doesn't seem to make That's any right. sense. Amen. But you get to the end of the month, and lo and behold, <laughs> God somehow takes care of us. Praise Amen. God, Amen. praise Amen. God. Amen. So this matter of giving, even beyond the time, to faith promise giving or grace giving, this is an act of worship Amen. that we should do. And, and, and I believe this also. Not only is it an act of worship, but I think he's teaching us here that it should be done systematically. Amen. Amen. Not haphazardly. Right. Huh? Amen. So well, I think all this stuff. I just don't believe in committing yourself <laughs> and things like this. I mean, as the Lord leads me, I'll give. Go ahead. I believe it would be presumptuous for me to say, 
I'll give X number of dollars for this coming year for missions when I don't even know if I'll have a job three or four months from that. Well, you know, that'd be a pretty good argument as long as you use it down at the car dealership, too. Amen. Amen. Huh? And you see, you sat now, you go down to the car dealership, you get in that new car, and, and, and there is something in that stuff that you smell. Makes you go delirious. <laughs> huh? You knew before you got there you couldn't afford the car. But that stuff gets in your nostrils, and all of a sudden you think you can buy anything. Boy, this guy has, you know? and, the, and, and you'll go through this gauntlet of men. I'm old enough, I can remember when you could talk to one man and buy a car. Yeah. Now several's got to beat up on you before you finally get <laughs> to the back room, and there's a fellow sitting there with a computer, and he's printing out a ring of paper that nobody's ever read. Yep. He signs that last, slides that last page over to you, and he says, "Now, if you will sign right here and pay this much a month for the rest of your life, you can drive that car." Yeah. Let me. Or do you stop him and say, "Wait a minute. Are you telling me that I'll have to make this much down and this much a month for five years?" That's right. I'm sorry, I have a conviction. I don't know what they'll bring forth. I'd be presumptuous to sign that paper. I don't even know if I'll have a job three or four months from then. Well, you better like walking. It goes to going to sell you a car. Right. Well, how about the fellow that goes in to buy a, a house? 30 years. You want to think about faith. Faith is a 75-year-old man signing a 30-year note. <laughs> We're going to say to this real estate agent and this banker and this yeah. lawyer, hey, wait a minute, I have a conviction. It would be presumptuous of me to say I'll make payments for 30 years. I don't even know if I'll have a job for you. Right. Right. Isn't it odd that we would have more confidence in the banker and the car salesman than we do God? Oh, that's right, Christian. We're only talking one year Amen. of commitment. The truth is, the truth is, we don't have nearly the conviction we we claim to have. Right. We're not consistent with it. It's like a fellow who says, "I tell you what, I ain't, I ain't going back down to that church anymore. Every time I go, we talk about money." <laughs> oh. I can see that fellow going to the grocery store. That'd be one hundred and forty-seven dollars and sixteen cents. But I tell you what, young lady, I'm going to pay you. This is the last time I'll be back. To this <laughs> Every time I come down here, you people talk about money. <laughs> hey, man. That's right. I'm not going back to that gas station anymore. I've never been there, but they talk about money. Yeah. <laughs> it's all up to me. The only place we don't want to go, they talk about money, is to the church. Tell it. Right. Convictions aren't all that strong, are they? It just depends on what we want or what we want to get around. Right. So Paul, Paul says here, uh, upon the first day of the week, notice this. Let every one of you. Right. Amen. He's Amen. writing to the church of Corinth. He isn't saying, let as many of you as want to. He says, let every one of you Amen. lay by him in store that God will prosper him to the no gatherings when I come. Right. I don't know what your church is doing for missions presently. How many missionaries you support, how much you are giving on a weekly basis or monthly basis to missions. But you could do more if everyone would get involved. Amen. Amen. That's right. I was preaching in a church some years ago, and uh, that church had seen great revival. Great revival. And uh, they had a half dozen missionaries that were supporting for $35 a month each. And when revival came through, they got a burden for the world. And now that church probably has 60 missionary families, $150 a month each. Praise God. Amen. And I was talking to the pastor about that, and I said, Preacher, that's, that's wonderful. He said, it is wonderful. Well, it's not been said. Still only about 65% of our people give to missions. But what can they do with 100% people? Uh, right, right. Amen. 
what could you do? If everyone said, I'm, I'm going to give up. They said, well, well, Winston, I can't give much. The will of God is much, no matter what the amount is. Amen. Right. If there's one fellow that God says, I want you to give $10 a week to missions, and he faithfully gives $10 a week to missions, and there's another fellow that God says, I want you to give $100 a week to missions, and he faithfully gives $100 a week to missions, one's no more faithful than the other. Right. Yeah. I, for years, I don't know there anymore, but for years I preached in the church. There was two fellows in that church, and each of them gave over $700 a week to missions. Amen. It's pretty impressive, isn't it? But the truth is, most missionaries don't go to the mission field because a man gives $700 a week. They go to the mission field because a little, little lady gives $5 a week. Amen. And, uh, gives Ten dollars a week, and, Praise and the kid brings twenty-five cents in a week. Amen. Right. Teenager brings in a dollar a week, Amen. and that's pretty much how most missionaries get to the mission. That's right. That's right. It. Because we each determine what the will of God is for us, not measuring ourselves by each other. Amen. Dear Lord, what what do you want me to do? Amen. In helping <clears throat> these missionaries yes, to get to the far flung regions of the world to preach the gospel of Christ to them, what do you want? me to do. Then it doesn't matter what anyone else around you is doing. Right. The truth of the matter is you ought not know what anyone else around you hey. right. is doing. That's right. That ought to be you and the Lord. That's right. But I say to you, all of us ought to do something hey. to help get the gospel of Jesus Christ to regions beyond. Hey. Vincent says, giving is the outcome of a settled principle, not of an occasional impulse. <laughs> Amen. Giving is the outcome of a settled principle. Amen. Not of an occasional impulse. Yep. <clears throat> I've often said, it, it looks like after uh, 29 years now since I've pastored a church, uh, I, I, I'm probably not going to be pastoring another church. <laughs> but if I did, and the church called me, I would say, listen, I'll come, but there's going to have to be a little remodeling program. I want all the pads taken off. I want all the coverings taken off the floors. I want wires run to every pew. And I want the coverings put back on, on the carpet put back down, and I want those wires to terminate at the pool. And I want a foot pedal. <laughs> so if I'm, I'm saying something that I want everyone to do, I'll get that foot pedal and run current to those pews. And they'll say, Whew, I see you. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because so many Baptist people don't want to do this, they don't see it. Yep. How about faith in it? Yep. How about we do it just because it's right? Yep. Whether we feel like That's right. doing it or not. You see. Giving is the outcome of a settled principle, not of an occasional impulse. Amen. Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all your needs. Amen. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. <laughs> that promise was given to a church that was faithful to support Paul's missions outreach. Hey. Not everyone has a right to claim that verse. That's right. But if you are involved in helping to get the gospel to regions beyond, you have every right to go to Philippians 4.19 to lay hold of that verse and say, my God shall supply Amen. all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I, you see, I tell you, it's a blessing. Amen. Thank you. I, well, I don't know what I could do if I didn't tithe and give offerings. I don't know. Uh, I know what I want. I, I want a brand new XJ Series Jaguar. <laughs> That's what I want. Oh, uh, when I started wanting this car, it was about $65,000. <laughs> They're about $150,000 now. I'm getting further and further. <laughs> you said, well, what's wrong? Do you think there's anything wrong with you wanting a new Jaguar? No. Now, there'd be plenty wrong if I went down to the store and got me one. <laughs> that might not be for you. I'm not saying it would be for you. I'm saying for me. I don't believe it's the will of God for me right. to do that. And if it turns out that it is the will of God for you, <laughs> I was a young preacher four years ago. I was 
preaching a meeting in North Carolina, and he called me, called me Pops, and he said, hey, Pops, he said, can I take you to lunch today? And I said, sure. And uh, he said, I'll come by and get you. And he came by the church where we had a physical trailer set up. He came by, and uh, he was driving a brand new Jaguar that his father had just bought. He said, you want to drive? I said, uh-huh. <laughs> no, if it's the will of God... I don't care if you come to church in a fleet of gold-plated Rolls Royces. Right. That's fine with me. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm not an envious bone in my body about it. Just don't believe it's the will of God for me, you see. Hey. What, we, what we must do is determine, God, what do you have for me? And I'd rather see a world hear the gospel of Jesus Christ or pack around me everything I want. That's good. Amen. I made my mind up. Amen. And I wager that many of you have this way. And I beg those of you who have it. Will you join us? Will you, by the grace of God, ask God to forgive you for not tithing and start tithing? Will you, by the grace of God, get involved in faith promise giving? So that you can say, we support 50 missionary families. Amen. Amen. And when you use that word, we, make sure it's an honest one. Amen. Let's pray together. Pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for enabling us to send the gospel to the world. Yes, Lord, thank you. Lord, we heard tonight of one case to Philippines. I believe with all of my heart, Lord, if America continues in the direction she's going, we're going to lay down gospel flag. And it would appear to me that the Philippines could be the country that will take it up. Amen. I pray, Father, that you would help us to do all that we can. To jealously hang on to the opportunity that we have oh, God. of sending the gospel to others. I pray other countries would join us. Lord, I pray you'd not have to leave us out. Lord, I believe that that can be secured by folks like us in this room right now tonight. That if we would faithfully give of ourselves in your divine purpose for our lives, by giving tithes and offerings and witnessing the folk around us, we could secure for Help. future generations this wonderful opportunity. And Lord, I believe it is a marvelous opportunity yes, thank you. that Amen. we have. Bless your people, I pray tonight. May we surrender to your divine plan in Jesus' name. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Would you stand quietly and reverently to your feet, please? As you listen to this invitation number, if you know the words, you can sing. But if you'd like to make this altar a place of prayer, Lord, help me. I don't know what you want me to do this year concerning my faith promise giving. Help me to know. Help me to commit to it. And to be as committed in my gift as we hope the missionaries will be in their goal. If there's a need in your heart, I invite you to come. Oh,
what I'm going to say to my Savior face to face one day. Amen. Lord, what I could have done and all you placed in my hands. I pray tonight that you'll go home and say that the Word of God is preached. And do an examination in your heart. Let's ask God to help us with the greatest things God ever taught me a long time ago. The thing about giving. The Lord. Amen. I, I, uh, I remember on the road, I've told this probably a little bit in the church. We were on the road five years in evangelism. I, I'm, I'm thinking of a man by the name of Mr. Smith. He fell off a ladder and broke both of his, I want to say his ankle, it might have been a knee. He, he's 70 years of age, and he supported me $30 a month while I was on the road. Probably lived on, he's a crazy, I went to visit him in the hospital with both legs broken. He said, preacher, pray that I get a job when I get out of here. I said, man, what's wrong with you, man? But he supported me $30 a month. Well, if that don't do something to your preaching, I can tell you right now, it helps a whole lot when you go home and you don't have any grocery money and you go to the mailbox and you see a dear old man faith faithfully faithfully right. supporting Amen. mission yeah. preaching Amen. 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 Amen I remember on the road this God was speaking to our hearts my wife and I she's back there and the preacher went across he just come across the parking lot and I saw him and the Lord said Go we'll give that man his money. And I pulled out a twenty dollar bill. He retired preacher. He's up in age. And he wasn't pastoring him. I slipped him a twenty dollar bill and me. We were going in to eat. The line went around this way, it kind of went around as a gymnasium. I got in the line. I gave him that twenty dollar bill at the door. And the time I got around the line and picked up my tray, somebody had come in behind me and slipped something in my pocket. You never believe what it was. God had already given me in 10 minutes my $20 back. It's a wonderful life. Yes, it is. It's a wonderful life to be able to see what God can do through you, like He said, through you. Amen. Amen. I challenge you to try it. He's in an old time meeting, he's having a missionary gift. Y'all know what I'm talking about? They didn't bring offer plates. They brought a wheelbarrow out there. The preacher said, we're going to fill this wheelbarrow up for this missionary. Several hundred people there. I was sitting up there with the dignified preachers. My wife sitting back there in the back. She had all the money. So you know how we do it, fellas. I, 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 went, I looked back at my wife and I nodded. That means in English, give. <laughs> what it didn't mean was give all. I didn't mean that. <laughs> Holy Ghost will burn meetings. She gave off. So the McNeil family got in the van. I didn't have any money. We we kind of this next day we was heading out for Chris. I said, we better take an offering in this van here, see if we can get out of the parking lot. And uh, that that night, I, I knew I didn't have any. She gave all. And I had a check, and that was about it. And about the day before, way back to I didn't have a credit card, I had nothing. I just, we just went day to day, faith to faith. And that night before, my wife sang that song you see so many times around here, Brother Danny's heard her sing, It's Real, It's Real. She sang it that night before, and preachers were trying to run through walls and make new doors in the building, and jumping pews and shouting all over the place. And a lady came up to her after the meal. We had a meal like we're fixing to have right now. If I'd shut up, amen. <laughs> and she said a lady came up to her, hugged her neck, and slipped a little envelope in her pocketbook. She said, let me look at this envelope. Every dime that my wife gave to the missionaries that night was back in that envelope the next day. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I told a treasure one time. He got mad at me. I, they threw a preacher out down in Florida. They 
threw him out of his church because they found out he had a heart condition. They threw him out in the street. He came to our mission conference. I told the treasurer, give him everything we got in the mission account. His teeth like they fell out on the floor. He like they lost his mind that night. He was trying to rent a building across town that we had. And every time that we gave to that preacher, the next day, the man called me on the phone and said, Preacher, I got the rent money for that building and I'll give it to you. And I pulled in the service the next night and I had every one of those $100 bills that we gave out of the mission fund the night before. I had it the next night in the pulpit when I stepped in the pulpit the next night. Try it! It's a blessing! Amen. It's wonderful. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, praise God. I could preach another two more hours. I'll tell you right now. Here's what we got. Brother David, you ready back in your room? Y'all go ahead and get the light on. We're going to tour the world right now in about five minutes. How's that? I want all you missionaries to go to your room. Brother Myron, you go to the Philippines. Denmark is not here. Brother Sullivan, you go back to Maine over there. Here's what we got going on. Okay? Everybody, if you'll go to these rooms tonight, is going to get an appetizer. What we're doing is working our way upstairs. We're preferably by, there's some fried chicken upstairs. Amen? So what we got to do is start right here. We've got in this room back here what they call, help me, a hyperti. Am I saying that right? It's a, it's a Danish cheese. It's, no, it's nothing more than fancy mozzarella. But praise God, it's expensive cheese. We found it. It's supposed to be from Denmark. It is a 130-year-old recipe. And so you're going to get a little taste of Denmark cheese. Hyperti is what they call it. I guess I'm saying that in the right proper way. Crackers and cheese, whatever it is. But hallelujah. So you go through there. You go from there right through there. And we've got some rice. And I think they do have some barbecue ribs. It is not dog. Hello. <laughs> All right. So let's have a word of prayer and be dismissed. Now here's what we're going to do. You go. You start there. You go through that room. You come right out of that room, go right down the hallway there, and you're going to get some of the finest rib lobster biscuits you've ever eaten in your life. Amen? And so you do that, and then come back. There's an elevator here for those of you that need to take it. There's some stairwells right here in the middle. You work your way. After you go down the hall to Main, you work your way back upstairs, and there's direct traffic upstairs, okay? There's a salad room that Africa... We want you to go up there and visit Africa. Brother Bo, you can take your daughter and y'all go on up there right now. I want you to meet the missionaries, shake hands with the missionaries as you go through, pick up their prayer card, that's very important, and uh, stay and eat. Amen? There's something to eat in every room, and you go upstairs and visit the Africa room first, and there's a salad bar or salad. And then you come right back out and they've got a full plate for a meal for you. They'll serve you, okay? You enjoy coming tonight, say amen. 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 We appreciate all of you coming. Let's have a word of prayer. Brother Ken, I, I appreciate you, brother. And uh, he's been gone to see his daughter in Tennessee. And they made it back so they can get back to the conference here. Let's have a word of prayer. You bless the food. And then we're all heading to Denmark, okay? Are y'all with me? All right, let's bless the food. All right, go ahead. Yes, Lord, thank you. Father, we just thank you so much for our missionaries, Lord. The missionaries that are with us today, Lord. We just we pray for all our missionaries, Lord, to continue to watch over the children, Lord, <coughs> on the field. And, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you'll meet their needs, Lord. Father, I pray that you'll help us, Lord, to recognize uh, yes. the part that we have in it. 
Let me have your attention now. Don't forget tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Tomorrow night, got more missionaries and other preachers coming this way, all right? 7 o'clock Tuesday night, 7 o'clock Wednesday night, all right? God bless you. Enjoy.